name's Jim Robinson. I head up work on social impact bonds in the Cabinet Office, and uh, that work sits within the social investment and finance team, uh, which itself is part of the Office for Civil Society, which is kind of the government's spiritual home of the big society, I guess. Uh, in sort of 15 minutes, I'm going to canter through three things. So first, what are social impact bonds? Where are they used? Second, how might one apply social impact bonds to troubled families? And third, what is government doing to promote this agenda to, to roll out social impact bonds? So first, what, what are SIBs? Well, I, I kind of think of SIBs as, as the confluence of really two agendas. So first of all, there's the open public services agenda, which is seeing a greater emphasis on payment by results. So government paying for, or commissioners in general paying for, real-world social outcomes rather than simply um, inputs or, or outputs. Uh, however, sort of there's the, the other key theme is a desire for a greater diversity of public service supply. So that, that means uh, potentially a greater role for uh, organizations in the, in the voluntary community social enterprise sector. And so in a way, those, those two can conflict because uh, where you have payment by results, you necessarily have a lag between doing the intervention and getting paid for it because uh, clearly the, the commissioner needs to observe whether the outcome that the provider is, is trying to affect has indeed been achieved. And that lag might be a year or two in some cases. Clearly that can create a problem for some smaller organisations which lack access to working capital. So the, the social impact bond is really a solution to that problem. So in, in a social impact bond, an external investor provides the working capital to allow uh, a VCSE organisation to deliver public services under a payment by results contract. Now the world's first social impact bond uh, was launched at Peterborough Prison, I'm sure people will know, September 2010. Uh, that's working with uh, prisoners sentenced to 12 months or less in prison. Now the rate of reoffending among that cohort is, is very high, uh, about 60%. And uh, clearly, it's very expensive when prisoners in that group reoffend because they have to go back, they have to be arrested, go back through the court system. A lot of a lot of them end up back in prison. Uh, sort of by statute, there's no intervention working with that group, and clearly, in, in the current fiscal climate, it's difficult to introduce anything new. So the social impact bond at Peterborough, uh, for the first time, brings brings in preventative work with that group of prisoners. So uh, at Peterborough. Uh, five million pounds of investment was raised from uh, a group of, I think, 17 social investors, largely charitable trusts and foundations. That five million pounds is spent over a period of six years, intervening with 3,000 prisoners, uh, both before they are released and then meeting them at the gates of prison, working with them afterwards, sort of working on uh, employment support, housing support, with the aim of reducing reoffending. Uh, and so uh, if, if reoffending falls compared to a control group drawn from other prisons who don't receive that intervention, then uh, investors stand to make a return. So that they could receive up to £8 million on their £5 million investment if, uh, if they sort of achieve stellar performance. But crucially, uh, if reoffending falls by less than 10% compared to the control group, which is, which is ambitious, then the investors stand to lose all of their money. So this, there should be a win-win. Government has transferred implementation risk away. Uh, the, the providers, the lead one is the St. Giles Trust, which is a social enterprise. Providers aren't on risk for the, for the outcomes payments. Investors stand to make a return if it works. And prisoners get an intervention who, who wouldn't have done otherwise. I slightly sort of laboured that because I think it's helpful to understand how a real social impact bond works in order to consider how it might be applied to troubled families. Now, build, building on Peterborough, uh, a further wave of SIBs was launched in April uh, this year. So. That's the Department for Work and Pensions looking at NEETS. So six SIBs were launched in April. And others are in development. So uh, probably uh, the leading one would be Essex County Council. And I think someone from Essex might be here today. Uh, Essex is looking at children on the edge of care. That procurement process is underway. Manchester also doing something similar. Uh, Greater London Authority looking at homelessness. So that's kind of what, what is a SIB? Uh, uh, how is it used? Uh, Second, though, uh, how could a social impact bond be applied to troubled families? Well, uh, th th this, this is a question that Cabinet Office posed to itself uh, about a year and a half ago. And um, we were looking at, in fact, we, we approached it from the perspective of the social investment market. We were looking at 
how we might increase demand for social investment capital, which clearly SIBs require. But even, even then, there was already uh, a strong policy agenda on, on troubled families, which of course was only heightened following the riots last summer. Uh, so we looked at combining those two agendas, and uh, you, you clearly have in troubled families uh, a proposition potentially where, because the costs are very high, thousands of pounds per year, and because interventions are considerably lower than that, perhaps perhaps 10,000 for a FIP for, for a year, then potentially you have a self-financing proposition. So that, that's what we set out to test. So we, we worked, starting, starting a year ago, starting last September, we worked with four English local authorities looking at whether SIBs might be appropriate, might be viable in their cases for, for sort of working with troubled families. And those, those four authorities were Birmingham, uh, Leicestershire, Westminster, Hammersmith and Fulham. And in each case, we really supported the local authority with where they wanted to go on, on the outcomes. So uh, we asked them to think about the kinds of outcomes that they, they would hope to achieve with troubled families, be they around health, education, offending, employment, whatever it would be. And we worked up a methodology to assess if those outcomes were achieved, what would be the potential savings, cashable and otherwise, and benefits to a range of partners, both to the local authority, which would be the commissioner, but also to other local partners. So for example, the, the police service, if, uh, if fewer arrests uh, take place uh, or whatever. Uh, and at the risk of teaching grandmothers to suck eggs, this was news to us anyway, we, we worked out a kind of five point uh, methodology. We, we called it a sort of cashability equation, looking at how one calculates those benefits. So looking at what's the unit cost of the existing service uh, how often is it required? So is it an arrest? How many times is, is a person arrested per year, for example? Third, volume. So uh, of, of the target cohort, how many people are subject to that issue? Fourth, the impact. If we do bring in, bring in an intervention, what will it do in terms of reducing that indicator of arrests or worklessness or whatever it is? And then crucially, fifthly, cashability. So if, if we reduce the, the requirement for, for services, uh, then what does that translate into in terms of reduced spending? Uh, the findings were quite interesting, so uh, each, each authority, of course, came out in, in a different place. Um, t two of the authorities focused on what we called narrow propositions, so they looked quite narrowly at children on the edge of care, uh, an expensive spending area. Um, unsurprisingly, they, they found that it should, in principle, be possible to purchase a social impact bond, uh, which is viable based on reducing the need f for taking children into expensive care. I say that's not surprising because that's, that's where Essex is at the moment and is currently in, in procurement for such an intervention. The, the authorities that took a broader approach, looking at a range of outcomes, which would therefore require more expensive interventions, found that they could get almost but not quite all of the way to coming up with the necessary outcomes payments on the basis of their own cashable savings. And I think this, this is a pretty interesting finding in the context of CLG's Troubled Families program, where clearly CLG put in 40% of the required payment for turning around each family, but the authority and partners need to come up with the remaining 60%. So I think we would suggest the kind of approach that we took at analysing where all the benefits and costs accrue across the authority and its partners would be helpful in building up a picture of uh, where, where the money might come from to sort of meet that remaining 60%. Uh, and we, we published a report on, on this. It's available on the Cabinet Office website. I'm, I'm sure we can send out the link to anyone who'd like to find it, but it's a sort of 50-odd page report which explains the approach we took across the four authorities. So that's how one might apply social impact bonds to troubled families. Uh, and then finally, uh, what is the government doing to support this? I think we identified two key barriers to greater rollout or greater uptake of, of social impact bonds, be that uh, by local authorities or equally by central government departments, uh, some of which are now considering SIBs too. So the first, the first barrier is simply capacity, so a lack of familiarity with what is a new uh, procurement approach, uh, buying outcomes rather than outputs. Um, and in order to help uh, build capacity among commissioners, uh, we're in the process of setting up what we're calling a centre of excellence, although we're looking for a better name, but uh, some, some, some sort of function within the Cabinet Office to assist commissioners in, in designing SIBs. Um, and uh, as, as part of that, a series of uh, web-based resources should go live within the next couple of months, uh, taking people through the kind of steps that I've just outlined, but also uh, sharing case studies from other people who have done them, uh, sharing news about what's going on, in fact, other uh, 
commissioners in other countries are looking at doing this as well. So a, a resource for commissioners interested in developing SIBs. Coupled with an advice service, so for people who have looked through those resources and uh, uh, have sort of worked up an outline SIB proposition and who want a bit of advice on, on how to take it further, then there'll be some support within the Cabinet Office for that as well. So that's, that's the first issue, Commissioner Capacity. The second issue, though, is uh, this, this come back to this point of cross-cutting benefits. So uh, cl clearly it's, it's a problem where, uh, I kind of call it the collective action problem, where a social impact bond might be in the interests of government as a whole, uh, because if, if you sort of accrue all the benefits or add together all the benefits arising to all bits of the public sector, then the thing becomes viable. But no single commissioner actually has enough of those benefits concentrated in one place to make it viable for that commissioner alone. So in order to uh, address that problem, uh, we're currently developing plans subject to Treasury approval um, for what we're calling an outcomes finance fund. Uh, and this will be a top-up fund which will seek to recognise cross-cutting benefits for SIBs commissioned by one entity, or one entity and uh, perhaps co-commissioned between two entities. So, uh, for example, a local authority commissioning a troubled family SIB, which can demonstrate uh, uh, benefits beyond the authority itself, uh, we think would be able to bid into this fund in order to seek a top-up in recognition of the benefits accruing more widely across government. So, for example, education, health, uh, uh, employment benefits and, and so on. So that's that's kind of where we are. We have we have the Centre of Excellence, we have the Outcomes Finance Fund, both coming down the track. Uh, we'll be pretty interested once they launch in uh, good quality propositions. So uh, I would I kind of urge you to keep an eye out for what's going on there if if you're interested in participating. And I mean our objective is to see more and better SIBs rolled out across government, certainly in the troubled families area and in other areas too.